First up, let's talk to Marco Longhi, who's a Conservative MP and joins us now. Good morning to you, Marco. Good morning, Judy. How are you? Very well indeed. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to keep this brief because there's so much else more important to people to talk about. Has uh, Suella Braverman done anything wrong? Should she resign? Absolutely not, and neither should she resign. I think the story here isn't what Suella did or didn't do. The story here is the civil service wanting to unseat and remove a member of the cabinet who happens to be, again, a Conservative and a Conservative Brexiteer. That's the story. How did that come about? Why aren't we looking into that instead, rather than wasting our time over something that uh, Suella was absolutely entitled to do? There, there does seem to be a pattern, doesn't it? I mean, the Prime Minister has lost uh, three cabinet ministers, but they, the ones who've been under pressure over recent years have, uh, you know, the Priti Patel, uh, Dominic Raab, Suella Braverman, um, a lot of petty allegations a lot of the time. Some have been upheld, as we know, by Dominic Raab uh, resigned, but um, uh, stuff that, um, frankly, in most offices, people wouldn't uh, really bat an eyelid at, and yet we're told, you know, there's all these problems. It does seem to be a strange coincidence that it's always staunch Brexiteers. Always, uh, and I am a staunch Brexit here, and one wonders when the start coming, uh, uh, you know, looking for minnows Matter like this. Matter of time. The back <laughs> Matter of time, absolutely. But they started with the Prime Minister, didn't they? They knew that the civil service absolutely hated breakfast. Uh, Brexit, I think they must all like breakfast, that's for sure. Uh, they hated Brexit. They hated, they knew that by removing Boris Johnson, that was the biggest obstacle that they had to remove in order to start to think of ways of rejoining. That is now well at pace. Of course, that's happening. And they are just unpicking one by one all of those prominent Brexiteers that made sure that the people. Uh, won through that vote, the biggest democratic exercise that we've ever had. And, and they seem to be succeeding. So I honestly hope the Prime Minister deals with this the way it should be, which is not to give it a moment's further thought and to bat it into the long grass. Suella has done absolutely nothing wrong and I, su I support it completely. OK, well, let's talk about what the uh, Home Office should be dealing with. And two big stories you know, coming up this week, one today and one coming up later in the week. The immigration uh, later this week. The immigration figures expected to see net migration last year of 700,000. 700,000 more people living in this country. Yes, some of those are students who will leave, but they still need somewhere to live while they're here. Uh, they still need to register with a doctor. They're, with got people who bring their families when they're postgraduate students they bring their children they need a school place uh, they uh, they go on the trains they use the roads they they need water services the electric grid um, no extra services no extra housing provided for them um, 700,000 I think most sane people would agree is too many more people in the country what's the correct number though I completely agree with them I I'm not able to give you a number Julia but if you were if you were a student and you wanted to go and stay in the United States to do your course or in Australia, you wouldn't be able to bring your brother, your mother, your aunt, your uncle and every other member of the family. Uh, this is what appears to be happening here in the UK. And I am extremely concerned by a lot of the signals that I'm getting out of the Treasury who seem to follow a particularly uh, a tunnel visioned uh, school of thought economically. They are basically saying that the greater the number of net migration we have into the country, the greater the uh, amount of GDP that so the, the economy grows. What they don't tell you is GDP per capita, because clearly the more people there are in the country, the more diluted that pot of money yeah. becomes. But, but also, it's, it's, but also the benefits only accrue to certain people. If you're a shareholder in a big company that's got a load of correct. cheap labour, that's great. If you're competing for the housing, the jobs, the GP appointments uh, at, at the bottom of the pile, uh, you're not benefiting. You're not, and you're talking about the what I would broadly describe the social impact. So you're talking about the schools, the hospitals, the doctors, the GPs, and all the other public services that we describe, and not least, even some of the other social breakdown that we could experience amongst uh, parts of the country that have just simply never seen the kind of net migration that we have now. Uh, look, I, I'm quite happy to have an Australian point system. That's what we voted for, but it's not what we've got. We just seem to be lowering the bar in order to deal with the what we seem to have as a problem rather than actually dealing with what industry needs, specialty services that we need, and that's okay. But just bringing as many people as we want into the country because it suits a particular economic model 
for me is completely wrong. OK, I mean, a lot of people I know will be cheering you on and agreeing with you on that. I mean, other things that the Home Office needs to be dealing with is issues like, I mean, we've seen Tower Bridge uh, just now. We've got law-abiding people, Tower Bridge in London, having to stop uh, gridlocked because Just Stop Oil protesters once again in central London streets, uh, stopping people going about the law, their law-abiding business uh, and people taking matters into their own hands, that people shouldn't break the law. But also, I can 100% understand uh, why people would feel they have to do that because they feel the police aren't on their side. And at the same time, we've had overnight these these appalling riots on a housing estate in Ely in uh, in Cardiff. Uh, two teenagers have died in a, a, a car crash. Um, uh, emergency vehicles have arrived on the scenes. We've seen uh, a riot breaking out, of vehicles set alight. Uh, we have seen uh, fireworks thrown at police, paving slabs, we understand, uh, having been ripped up and thrown at police. Absolutely terrifying scenes uh, for, for local people there. Um, six police vans of riot police with dogs sent in to try and calm things down it's still not completely calm um what is your reaction to that seeing that footage and hearing that news i mean it's horrific isn't it julia i'm a member of the home affairs select committee a relatively recent addition to that committee and i was asking uh one of the chiefs of police who came and gave evidence just last week uh you know how they came to make certain decisions over the policing of the coronation because a lot of labor mps were trying to attack the police for what was a very very difficult once in a generation type event so they actually arrested certain people which uh it, when you looked at what they were uh, actually doing on the day perhaps didn't warrant no no it didn't they, no they, no i'm no, they, they the public, it did not warrant decision. they were exercising their their their, their legal correct. protests right. correct but based on the evidence they had on the day they had to take a risk-based decision <laughs> And, and so I support them in that respect, although I've been extremely critical of the Met Police in the past. So if they have any sort of reasonable doubt that people could come to harm, they, they suddenly saw people giving out lots of rape alarms that give out an excruciatingly high-pitched noise, and they thought, oh, they're here to scare all of the horses that are going to be parading, which could cause havoc, people could die. So they took a decision, which in hindsight, it seems, was the wrong okay, one. OK, but let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's but, move on from that, though. But, I mean, yeah, no, no, I, absolutely, I want to move on from that. But this is where the police want to have their cake and eat it. Because what I then asked them, what about the people who might come to harm, who might be stuck in an ambulance or perhaps in a fire that uh, a, a fire engine can't get to because they're in that massive long traffic queue that Just Stop Oil or Extinction Rebellion have stopped people getting through? Never mind the people who are trying to keep a job and wanting to yep. earn a living for their people, all the self-employed people who, if they don't work, they don't get paid. Never mind them. I'm thinking about also the people who perhaps are coming to harm because of Just Stop Oil, and yet the police seem to be happy to walk slowly with them across the bridge yep. and eventually deal with them. But in the meantime, people can come to harm. So why is it okay to deal with them in the coronation very speedily because they assess the risk yeah. then? And why but is it not, not okay to, in, in other circumstances? I think there's a question a lot of people are asking. It's Mark. that lack of consistency, Julia, yeah. that I uh, really... And that's with. the crucial issue in the justice system and, and in the police system, that it needs Correct. to be the same for everybody. Mark Elongi, uh, Conservative MP, member of the Home Affairs Select Committee, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much.